are coon trapping, possum trapping, skunk trapping, whatever we can trap in this episode, we're gonna try to protect those nest predators. This has nothing to do with what I got going on. I just thought it was cool if I held it. But any which way, listen, if trapping coons and possums and skunks or whatnot is not for you, it's okay, but we're gonna trap them. We're trying to protect our nest animals from these nest predators. So y'all enjoy the episode. Sit back, got my man David Mack with me, back behind camera. Let's roll, son. Long time no see. They ain't ready. They ain't ready. Well, we on coon patrol today. Now, we'll start off a little bit just letting you know what we got going on. We're on the club. Uh, we got to catch some nest predators, which means coons, possums, skunks, anything like that. So, uh, yesterday I run in here, uh, had a little time, and I set some of these DP traps. Just a dog proof trap, uh, very easy to set. We'll show you that later or whatnot. So I'll come in here and set a couple dozen yesterday, just see if we can catch one or two and uh, help this nest pred uh, help the nest nesting animals uh, as we get closer to the springtime. So any which way, I got the head knocker and we're fishing a roll and go check traps. And then while we're doing that, during that time, I'll show you how to set some and maybe some more knowledge or information on actually trapping uh, your nest pred predators on your property. Let's roll. This property, everybody's gonna know this property just about as well as I do. Look right here. Oh yeah. Yeah. We got one turkey thief. So why do you why do you think uh, trapping nest predators are good? Well, with everything that goes on in the wild itself. The, uh, the turkeys that lay eggs, quail and everything, they have to contend with everything. Snakes, crows, hawks, coons, possums, skunks. And uh, if you can knock as many of those nest predators out before the nesting period, then that's just that more of a chance that that hen has a chance. And not only do they eat the eggs, if a hen's laid on something, a coon, possum, anything like that, they'll actually kill the hen too. So we're trying to give that turkey population uh, the best help it can get right here before they start laying. Young little coon. Make sure that, that uh. Lucky got a little, he double, double fist pawed in there. <laughs> but we will get him. And a lot of people need to understand that, like I said, even though a lot of people do like uh, uh, the coons and believe it, we're actually, uh, these coons are edible. So uh, I actually got a guy that eats or takes all the coons that, that, that I can give him. So it's another food source as well. Uh, it's not just uh, catching and dumping. We actually, we dump them in a crock pot, but. I had never personally just eat one, but David, we might have to do a kitchen cook or something. Down on the creek. Down on the creek. <laughs> well, let me get it dispatched and uh, we'll get with you here in just a second. <laughs> well, got the first coon down. Oh, it's not the first trap set, so that means that's good luck. You know, if you ever got something in the first trap, the rest of them gonna be terrible. But <laughs> anyway, uh, we got one coon, we're gonna load him up. We'll talk about it here in a little bit when uh, hopefully we caught some more. So one down, many more to go. Everything I need, yeah. Everything I need. not whatever I wanted. All right, we'll see if we can get down here and reset this thing. Oh. You feeding the coon the body armor? <laughs> well, something like that. <laughs> they gonna wish they had some body armor when I get done with them. Anyway, take these old DP uh, traps. It's just a dog proof trap, which means basically uh, a dog can't put his hand down in there and get what he wants, you know, and get caught in it like a uh, regular coil spring trap. But you just take that old thing. You can see that's where the trap catches right inside right there. So you just take it. I'll show you how it works. So now there's a trigger down in there. When that coon reaches down in there to grab his bait, he pulls that trigger. And when he pulls that trigger, that catches him. So then he's there just like this coon was this morning. He's here until I get here. 
So anyway, I'm gonna show you kind of what we use for baiting. A lot of people are always asking uh, what I use and whatnot. So uh, let me pull this out a little bit. I like my chain to be tight. And the reason being that the ground is soft. When I say tight from the point that I stake it down, I like my, that way if the ground is soft and they're able to get in there and pull and this thing just pulls out of the ground, it's already tight enough that they can uh, just pull the lever in there, the trigger. So I just take my bait of choice is uh, dry cat food and uh, Lucky Charms. Oh, they just seem to like it. And then I take, this is used cooking grease from the traceway up there. They just seem to can't get enough of that old, it's got the fatty, fattiness and all that inside that. So that's kind of basically what I use. And then uh, we take something legally, like I said, you gotta have something that covers this up. That way, non-target uh, birds and whatever else. A lot of people use golf balls, uh, stuff like that. Mice don't get in there, birds don't get hung up. So anyway, and uh, that's it. It's that simple to set that trap, set it, and you can be catching your nest predators on your property quick and easy it ain't rocket science Ugh. and you check these every day you got to check them every day every i prefer in the state of mississippi uh i think it's a 24-hour rule so from the time i check it you know i'm here the next uh next morning so most time they get caught at night and uh so they're in the trap you know 12 hours maybe not even 12 hours probably eight hours maybe tops uh and then i'm here every morning you know it's it's Trapping can be rough in the mindset itself, and we don't want the animals to, to stay trapped no longer than they have to. Uh, and so I come every morning, it's what, like 7.30 now, so we're here checking a line and get them, and get them reset as fast as we can. Just to kind of look, a lot of times you can go to these muddy areas and you kind of see where the coons passing through, but I mean, coons just show up anywhere. And what I've learned is, you know, of course we got feeders on this place and you can trap around the feeders and, and we will but uh if you've ever set coyote traps coons and possums just end up in them in the most weird spots so we just we got plenty of dps we just throw some here and there and uh see what happens pigs is here though pigs is definitely here and uh, it's just swivel around and i'm just gonna pull that tight there See what that does kind of so it's got a lot of rock in here and it's hard to find see how easy that comes out and that's why i like that chain to be tight so when he actually pulling the trigger if he actually pulls that trigger and it starts pulling this up at least the chain's already tight and it'll just go on and pull the trigger and get caught so we'll bait it up and then go find another spot Thing. Yeah. He's sitting there waiting on us. Oh man. Now this is a spot where me and David caught the 30. And uh after we left this spot and whatever, I seen some coon tracks come in here. So we just I come up here and set a few traps and whatnot and, and we got a coon. Like I said, I've seen three or four, but it's first night set and we do have a coon uh that we're gonna get. So hey, that's just another nest that ain't gonna get raided. What's your goal a year? On coons? Yeah. Uh, so on the club, they would like for me to at least catch 25. So if I could catch 25 raccoons on the club, uh, they're satisfied. Now, however, you know, every how many days I'm trapping, I'd like for all my all to be filled up. But uh, the goal is to help the turkey and nest the nest population grow. And the only way we can do that right now is to make sure that we, this time of the year, to knock out as many nest predators as possible. So. We pulled out two. We pulled out two. Two good cones. Oh, like I said, I know y'all probably won't see a lot of numbers, but oh, 
we're just getting what the law to give us at, at the moment so any hose just got to keep doing that if you're out there trying to catch coons and possum skunks to help your nest predator that's just put those traps out there, get you a couple of dozen of them, and uh, just roll with it. You ain't going to catch every night, you ain't going to catch every day or, or whatnot, but just daily hitting at it a little bit, you know, and then the numbers add up. So we got a couple more, we got about two more weeks before trapping season on the coons is over with, and we're going to hit them about as hard as we can, considering the, the weather. But anyway, I'm going to go take these coons to the fellow that wants them, and uh, maybe, David, maybe, they'll have to tell us in the comments, before I, after this video, should we do one more and do a catch and cook? You'll have to cook it, David. Ugh. <laughs> You'll have to cook. I'll it. video you cooking it and eating it. Oh uh, <laughs> man, <laughs> we'll have to see. But anyway, oh, we got more work to do and uh, more traps to set. But as for right now, let's go. Well. <laughs> I have rain jackets. I always forget them. I don't know what it is. I mean, I've had people send me rain jackets, and uh, I still forget them. So, this, when you got so many wheels spinning in your head, one of them allowed to be flat. <laughs> I don't see them. Come back here. Trip, huh? This water was this deep last night, or yesterday evening. It was just this deep. So. Luckily, we got out of here, you know. <laughs> yeah. It ain't one in that other one. Yeah. I can see over there. Let me toss some here. All right. One more critter. One more critter. Hey, this is actually a. Oh. The possum. What can I tell you about the possum? A lot of people, uh, this is a set where we caught a coon in yesterday, but I want to tell you, possums don't eat 5,000 ticks. <laughs> so, <laughs> Peter come out with this meme like a dozen years ago that possums eat like 5,000 ticks or whatever. They will eat ticks, but they don't just go out and be like, let me go find a tick. That's what turkeys do. Turkeys eat like 200 ticks a day while they're scrounging around in, these, in this forest. But So I know a lot of people think that, that the possum is, is something to uh, keep around because of this tick theory, but I just want you to know it ain't happening. Uh, you, you can get chickens or you can let the turkeys do it, or be like me, just spray your yard and not have to worry about no ticks. But I just want you to know, don't believe the tick myth of the possum. The possum gotta go. He eats the, the turkey laying on the nest and the egg. So, another nest predator down. That's, is that good luck or bad luck? Because uh, the first <laughs> that was the first. <laughs> Nope, no, nope, we checked the beaver trap. I know, that's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so usually we always said it's, it's bad luck if you catch something in the first trap that you run up on. Uh, and, and what I mean by bad luck is like, hey, you, you think it's gonna go good, but then the rest of the traps don't have anything. I'm gonna say since we checked the beaver trap, <laughs> and we didn't have nothing, that's the first trap. That's what we're hoping for anyway. <laughs> everything in this field, Dan. I mean, <laughs> David? Man, I spent three days with, with Gerald Swindle one time. He called me Daniel every time, man. Well, we just got talked through talking about my buddy Daniel Arms. So if y'all if y'all follow YouTube a lot, go to Daniel Arms Homestead. Arms Family Homestead. Good buddy of mine. But anyway, we got another raccoon. A little wet. Oh, he's wet. So are we. Yeah. like to be the spot to catch they've been used to coming in here when we were trapping hogs or whatever but oh. another raider now this place has been trapped for years uh i think last year we caught probably 37 uh off this place or maybe more the year before i caught 41 by myself and we had another trapper on here too so uh even though we've had like a dozen no four dozen traps out and it's been slow uh it's because we constantly do this. And a lot of people say, uh, David, a lot of people are always saying like, uh, well, if you trap this, nature will double up on this next year like it knows. And I just tell people, well, you gotta constantly keep trapping. You can't trap one year and think you're really doing good. So uh, anyway, we got another egg eater and we're gonna get him taken care of here in just a second.
try to tell people all the time, David, it's, it's, it's a different factor. I know a lot of people, they're always kind of like, you know, they just can't stand that part of it and whatnot. But, oh, uh, I think that coons and possums are cute and whatnot. And we had to get past that factor, you know. Oh, uh, oh, uh, and, and when it comes to management, we have to do it. Not everybody, it's not for everybody. So the people that's watching this, you know, and they, a lot of people think they're here for the hogs, but we do other land management as well. Trapping ain't for everybody, and uh, that's okay. You don't have to watch it, but just understand that we have a job to do. So uh, that's kind of where I stand on that. How many rings does a coon have on his tail? <laughs> as many as he can. How many rings does a coon have on his tail? <laughs> as many as he can get, I reckon. <laughs> that would be something that Google might be able to tell us. Uh, so if y'all are in it, uh, if you know the comments, if it, is there a number of rings on a coon tail? I, I don't know. Uh, all I know is when I show up, they don't get no more rings. <laughs> Because you are the reaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is where we caught, like I said, we caught all those pigs right there and uh, kind of tore up. But once we come back in here and plant this season uh, and everything, it'll, it'll shape them back out. And even though it was 30 pigs, we didn't have a lot of death in here long. I don't know what it is, but some places, like, if you just have them in there a long time, it's like nothing grows back. So since I had your help, we got them out of there fast. It should grow back up. But hey, if we lost this much of the food plot due to 30 hogs, that's all we lost, uh, then that's okay, considering what they could have done to all these food plots. So. I think the rest of this food plot looks pretty good. Yeah, we got to. Now, I don't know if y'all know, you know, a lot of times we did the Yacht Yacht blend with WMS, uh, Wildlife Management Solutions. They built a Yacht Yacht blended food plot. And as you can see with the clovers and and and, and uh, the wheats and, and all that that goes into all the good stuff it's like seven seven blends of it i ain't no food plot biologist i just know <laughs> it's green and it's good for you ain't no ryegrass in this <laughs> you let your granddaddy plant that ryegrass we 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 up we stepping it on up over here with a yacht yacht blend so y'all look for it next year in your local co-ops and stuff uh we sold out this year so maybe we can sell out next year What do you do with these coons? Oh, well, I actually got a guy that likes to eat them. Uh, now, it's a little late in the year for me to want to eat them, I guess. I don't know. We saw one that had a wool hole in him yesterday, but the guy likes them. Uh, the guys that I give pigs to, they like they want the beavers and the coons. So, uh, we'll take this to him. Uh, and he'll skin them out and put them in the crock pot or whatever he wants to do with him. Make peanut butter out of them for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> To the next one. We tripped all them. So while they while we tripped while we tripped all those traps, coons and possums, because we're doing this because the flood's coming. Uh, they'll eat out of those traps the next couple of days if they come in. And then we'll come back, reset them when the sunshine come back. And uh, we done fooled them. I felt like they was gonna move last night. We got two in the road up here. Looks like we got a double. So we got a double on coons this morning. This was a little old creek. And I guess there's one thing that we hadn't really talked about is uh, kind of why we're setting in places where we're at. And uh, this was a creek course. Now you gotta realize it, we're getting a flood. We got a lot of rain last night, but along this creek right here, this was really low. And coons just like to, you've always seen coons wash their food and stuff like that, but they just follow that running water. So I set one on this side of the road and one on this side of the road and it paid off. We got a double right now. So uh, that's two more coons that we've got this morning and uh yes it's kind of wet and, and uh, uh whatnot but we're gonna get them taken care of you know we joke around and carry on a lot you know about stuff but trapping is serious you know and a lot of people don't hear or see the uh i don't know if you call it the real side of me or i don't know what you call it but uh i respect the fact that we have to uh take these animals and do what we got to do so uh, even though me and you joke around and carry on, we're having a good time. We like to trap in general. Uh, you know, when, when you see it a lot of times, you know, and uh, but you just you just gotta know you, it has to be done. And uh, I ask people here, if you're watching, you know, just to understand that this has to be done. This is a part 
of a way of life and uh, we're just trying to bring it to you uh, the best we can is the way I feel about it so I hope you understand I hope people understand that because like I said I'm not going to apologize for being a trapper you know I just all I can do is explain it to people it's not my job to make people understand it I guess so uh, but anyway got some more cones down I'm gonna get these out of the trap and uh, we're gonna move on to the next section You ever been bit by a cone? I have not, but my son run a cone line, a trap line by himself one time. Son of a and <laughs> boy, <laughs> little bite, to... <laughs> Jay. Uh, my son run a uh, trap line by himself one time and uh, was getting a possum out, and uh, the possum had been playing possum. And <laughs> so after he had, uh, dispatched it and reached down, it actually had, was playing possum and uh, bit him and clamped on. And when he slung his finger like that, it just ripped all the skin off of it. So. Uh, but my kid knows now. <laughs> Double mm. tap if you have to. But anyway, well, let's get this thing dispatched and uh, put him in there, man. It's, it's just been a good morning, and we got to load the ranger up, and we got another spot we got to go check before the storm comes. Mm. What number is that? One, two, four. We got five critters. Five. Four cones and a possum. Doing good, Not son. Not too bad. That Doing adds good, to what, son. two more yesterday? Yeah. You know I got thing last night. You might be good luck. I might be. You might be. You might, might be good be. luck. <laughs> Keep me around. Keep me around. <laughs> oh, that was a nice truck. Yeah. Bonds crossing, they so sweet. They so nice. All right, so one more time, what are we doing? We are. Got this loaded up. We got another piece of property that we're going on where we caught the beavers at. If you watched that video, if you haven't, go back and watch the beaver video. We're going over there with the truck because we've kind of tore up the road through the, what we call the jungle. So we're not trying to mess that road up anymore considering we got so much rain. So we're driving around, check it from a different angle, and then uh, see what we got. And then we're going to end it. We see the gates. <laughs> the head knocking the weights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rain's getting closer, Dave. The rain's getting closer. What you moving so fast for? Because <laughs> I know there's a storm coming, and it ain't just me coming for these cones. <laughs> <laughs> it's a storm. I don't want to get caught in it. it Seems like every time I set traps. Rain shows up. Well, like you're part of the y'all y'all persona now is like if if it can go wrong, it might go wrong. If it's gonna be wet when it does. But I ain't gonna stop trapping because of the rain. I got a trip. I got a trap across the creek. I got a trip. But uh. Come on, track star. <laughs> when you get my age, you gotta swim with it. <laughs> you gotta swim with the rug. <laughs> get that airflow. Finish this up, man. I had a bunch of holes coming in right here. We had a feeder right here. They just left. I don't know where it went. Just gone. Maybe they heard about me. You do something with trapping every day. I try to trap every day. Uh, on the days I don't trap, when my wife said, 
don't go tramp. <laughs> we just never. All right. Well, we didn't get none on this end of the property uh, this morning. Don't mean we won't. We'll stay at it. But we ended up with a one, two, three, four, and a, and a possum. So that's five total and uh, two yesterday. So we got seven nest nest predators off this piece of property as of right now. And uh, like I said, when this flood, we got a lot of rain coming. So we'll trip them. We'll start over. Listen, if you're into trapping and you want to learn it, these Duke DPs are the best way to go. Uh, they're very simple to use and whatnot. And if, if it's if it's not for you, then uh, I just want you to know that Duke makes makes a cage as well. So uh, if, if you just don't right now, you don't think you're hard enough to catch them in, in, in a foothold, that's fine. They make a cage trap too, and you can also uh, uh, if you're not into dispatching these animals, you want to relocate. Uh, that's up to you as well on relocating. Just be careful because you have to remember when you relocate animals to different areas, they're going to fight with somebody, especially if you do a boar coon or something like that. They got to fight their way back into that territory. They didn't raise up in that territory where everybody kind of knew that scent of that coon, I guess you would say, but uh, same way with feral cats and stuff. So just be careful. Just be mindful that when you're releasing an animal in a new place, I mean, he could be fighting for his life anyway. So sometimes we just have to think about dispatching may be more humane than what he's fixing to run into when you release him into the wild into a different area so that being said we catching coons nest predators i hope you enjoyed it be mindful this may not be for you but it still has to be done i thank you hit the subscribe button go to yachtyacht.com don't forget to support the channel i appreciate you so any which way y'all have a good one god bless and as always jesus loves you